Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and talking about the aerodynamics of motorbikes. Now you'll have to bear with me a little bit on this one because I suck at drawing motorbikes in a diagrammatical sense. But I do know my theory on this, so hopefully you're in for a good time. So with bikes like the Kawasaki H2R and stuff coming out with the sort of front wings and stuff like that, I thought I'd talk about what downforce means on a motorbike because it's something that the whole body leans into the corner and that will obviously change how your downforce is acting. Also on that Kawasaki I just mentioned, the front wings are only at the front. They're pretty small, so I'm assuming they don't make a huge amount of downforce, but then again, bikes don't weigh much but they're right at the front. So that's gonna cause strange center of pressure distributions and everything. So let me demonstrate what the result is of that. So obviously the benefit in a straight line is very simple. You've got a downforce vector at the front. As you try to wheelie your bike up, well, put the power down, your bike will wheelie up. Having a downforce vector from two front wings on a motorbike will help bring that front wheel down. It will mean that you'll end up with slightly more stability under acceleration and you'll end up with a load transfer because all your weight's on here. Because your center of gravity on a motorbike is pretty high, so you're getting a lot of moment to cause a wheelie. All your weight will shift to the rear wheel, this downforce will transfer to the rear tire, and you'll end up with an improvement in overall acceleration and controllability under acceleration. So the benefits in a straight line I think are pretty obvious and I don't need to explain very much. In cornering though, it's a little bit more complicated. And that's because how aerodynamics work for your motorbike depends completely on the style in which you're riding the bike. So when the bike's in a straight line, if you have a downforce vector, it will go from aerodynamics on the bike, of course, not the rider itself, it will just go straight down. Now, ignore these two center bits for a bit, but if we imagine that your rider just stayed perfectly centered on the bike and your CG is aligned with here, so let's just say it's at that handlebar point, as the bike leans over, your downforce vector is gonna lean over too because your wings are on an angle. So now, your downforce vector is this way, right? So now it's going to be thrusting you both down, but also out of the corner. Now, if we assume that your tires have a grip coefficient of about one, they'll probably have more on a race bike, potentially less on a, a road or dirt bike. So if we look at our center of mass on our bike, if we imagine we're cornering at a grip ratio with the tires one to one, and let's say our, our center of gravity is an arbitrary distance from the ground. We can see that at some arbitrary distance of the triangle, we've got to have our downforce, well, sorry, our weight of the bike, the mass due to gravity, compensated for by our lateral force. Well, it's gonna go that way technically. So that those two torques have to equal out. Now at a one-to-one -one, um, friction ratio, you're going to end up with these two forces being equal at a 45 degree angle of lean. The problem is here is that you've now lent your downforce over at exactly the same angle that you're cornering at. So your downforce isn't actually doing anything for your cornering because it's adding normal load to your tire, but it's also pushing it out of the corner at the same rate. So what you need to do is reposition your center of gravity. Now this is quite convenient because when you look at um, road bike racing on track, what they do is they go out over the side of the bike. Now what this is actually doing is it's shifting the entire center of mass of the bike. So if we look at where the bike's angle is, we've moved our center of mass of our bike and rider combination off axis. And by doing that, we now can get this down. So we get the appropriate force balance for a given cornering radius, but our bike is more upright. So this means we get more downforce going onto the tire than we're losing grip by lateral movement. So downforce is beneficial with this style of riding where you're hanging off over the side because your tire is going to gain back grip rather than just being pushed out of the corner. The opposite of course is true in something like supermoto riding where they put one leg out and get that bike nice and low, but their body is quite vertical because this is gonna mean that the axis of the bike is offset the opposite way from the center of gravity. You can see that distance there. And this will mean that downforce will actually push the bike out of the corner. And this will mean that you'll actually lose grip the more downforce you apply to your bike, which is kind of a frustrating scenario. But thankfully, at the higher speeds where downforce is more dominant, we're usually gonna ride this sort of style in a race condition. And that means that downforce is going to be effective for the bike. On the plus side, when you're throttling out as you exit the corner, you're then gonna have this boost going on as well. 
Under braking, you'll see a total increase in grip, but that rear is going to get a bit lighter. Now, the advantage of a motorbike versus a car is that the rider can apportion the brake bias dynamically. So if the rear is starting to get a bit light, they can back it off quite easily. Obviously, having all the downforce forward is going to make the bike feel a little bit more terrifying, but it's something that a professional rider can deal with quite well. And consequently, you would be expecting overall gains in terms of acceleration, braking, and cornering as a result of downforce on a bike ridden in this style. The difficult thing about the H2R setup is, is that it's getting only front downforce, right? This means that mid-corner, when you're not on throttle, the front's going to suddenly have more grip. So the bike's going to get a tendency to be very oversteery in comparison to what it was. The important thing to note here is, is that as long as the downforce is behind the front axle, we'll end up with an apportioning of moments. So if you imagine the bike is essentially acting like this, if you imagine like these as being the two tires, if the downforce is back here, you will end up with an increase in grip on both axles. So this is the downforce after the front wheel. You'll end up with a total increase of grip. If it's forward of the front wheel, you'll end up with a decreasing grip on the rear axle. So not, not just getting oversteery, but your total cornering performance is going to go down if it's forward of the front axle. But if it's aft, you'll get a total increase in grip. Even though the bike will feel more oversteery, it will be essentially faster. So that's the basics of how motorbike aerodynamics work. Um, hopefully you liked it. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button below for more videos. Uh, thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time.